It killed McDuck. It killed. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And I I'm totally not a Kelpie, I promise. Wanna go swimming? <laughs> and this is our thoughts on Disney's DuckTales Reboot, Season 1, Episodes 12 and 13, The Missing Links of Morshire, and McMystery at McDuck Manor. I must say that, oh my god, Launchpad. Yes. I couldn't stop laughing in this episode every time Launchpad spoke. And I still don't know what he entirely says at the end of the episode. Yeah, we got the part about they look like tasty eggs and then something something. Something something I haven't in a while. So I'm thinking he hadn't eaten in a while because he was snacking throughout the episode. So could have been maybe haven't eaten in a while or hasn't had eggs in a while. Because, you know, he comes back into the golf cart with a hot dog. I love how he's also the one to deliver the actual message of the episode. <laughs> It's very fun. And Huey is like, oh, that's very insane. Oh, God, you're choking on golf balls. We have a, wow, that's an incredible moment from Launchpad. Oh, no, we're back to normal. I also love the, I just like talking in this voice because everything I say sounds important. And I can't remember the two words he says. Baloney. Trampoline. <laughs> oh, and the whole concept of the episode overall was fun. And great Easter egg for those of the Pony Persuasion. Tara Strong and Andrea Lipman voiced the Purple Pony and Pink Pony respectively. So they were ponies. They wore clothes. They were the right colors. I love how Webby, like actually everyone except for Glomgold was like, yeah. <laughs> I love, can we like ditch the murder ponies? <laughs> yeah. I, I love that we were able to say that in the episode. I also love the fact that death is not a problem for this show. You can literally say that character has died. Also, Duckworth is probably evil, just based on what we've experienced so far and how he's portrayed in the intro, which is something Ember picked up on. We have to watch the intro again. And I'm like, okay, he's in the intro. Think for a brief second. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but apparently sometimes Lux is a little slow on the uptake. Yeah, just a little. I, I recognized Beaks. I took a second to remember that, and Ember had to remind me because his name's like not important enough for me to remember. Because <laughs> I'm like, he's just the evil billionaire guy. He's fun to watch. But other than that, I'm like, you're, you're, you're not. You're about as shallow as a poorly dug grave. You, you know, the, the kind you dig with a archaeologist brush. So his name just doesn't stick in my head. Also, he's brand new. So... He doesn't stick in my head like... Established characters yeah. from earlier iterations of the franchise. Like Glomgold and Mrs. Beakley, which I didn't recognize. <laughs> I also like how his beard inflated. Because we've seen it be removed and put back on before. It's like, is it real at all? Or does he just have it because he thinks it makes him look more Scottish? I think that's it. Because he's like, I wear, like I quoted in the intro... I wore a kilt, McDuck. Basically, I am going to outdo you. At I, everything. Yeah. Uh, also, the fact that apparently one of their ancestors that was basically Dark Duck was the guy who invented golf. It, it makes sense. Just all that anger. <laughs> uh, and then they banned golf. <laughs> I also love how everyone guesses everything the ponies are going to say. And the ponies are like, Oh, you just said that. You guys are like the least fun victims ever. They must have had so much fun with those parts. Mm-hmm. You can like really hear it in their voices. They're like so happy to play these. <laughs> to play evil ponies. It's great. Come on, run our backs. I also love that. But so we're like, yeah, we're going to make one. <laughs> I also love the part where they're going to, where they're like, yeah, we're going to take one into the ocean. And then he was like, nope. <laughs> And Launchpad is like, got the camera still! <laughs> I love how they were carrying around the front of the golf cart. Oh, this episode was so much fun. I knew it was fun, but then I start talking about it, I'm like, there's so much fun! There is, because you're like, okay, billionaires golf off 
Okay, Glomgold is going to try to kill Scrooge. Oh wait, that's not the plot? Because that's usually the plot. And I love how he fires his caddy and Louie is like, Nah, how about you be my caddy? Nah. For this? Eh. How about I pay you? Hey, if I'm going to be bored anyways. At least get paid for it. And then continues to collect the entire time. The only time I had an issue with him, but it was for plot reasons, was the whole shouting part. Like, just hit the ball already, though it does fit within his character, so it's not really that bad. It was just the one moment, like, oh. And then, oh, this is how we get the plot started. Oh, just hit the ball is very in character, because he's like, okay, we can't go home until you guys finish the game, so hit the ball already. Also, the whole fun bit of Glumgold clearly switching out the coin and calling tails. <laughs> The announcement throughout the entire episode was great. Not just because of the launch pad, but because of how professional Huey was. I hope they got enough footage that he was actually able to earn this badge. Mm-hmm. I also love the fact that... How are you still doing that? I'm doing it because it helps keep me grounded in a really crazy situation. <laughs> Gives me a sense of control. Yes, very important in these out-of-control situations. It sounds like we both had a lot of fun with this episode. So the ultimate question, any nitpicks? Oh, just the part where it's a tiny bit contrived that, oh, look, we just happened to have knocked the ball inside this mystical circle. And I step inside and, oh, we just happened to get transported to a fey golf realm. <laughs> Guarded by two Kelpies. And my Scottish mythology is a little weak, so I was like, I need to double check that that's the uh, water murder horse from some of my short stories. Oh, yeah, that is the water murder horse that has shape-shifting ability, so it's not necessarily always a horse. Just like Webby, the moment I was like, their manes are wet. Hmm. Yeah, I was like, that was off, because Webby did the typical girl reaction of, Oh my god, cute talking animals! And then, wait a second. Also, Webby's reaction to... Yeah, I've never actually been to a sport before, and she's doing all the types of things you do it more, um... She was specifically more acting like someone who goes to a football game, and I'm not talking about American football. No, regular football, because she even had one of, I don't remember what they're called, but those really annoying things. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember the names right now, but it's the... Bam, 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 bam. I'm not even going to try to replicate the sound, but that's usually the set of tones that go off and the problem was how it was getting picked up on the broadcast speakers when um we were getting them out of a large number of them at events so any more about this episode or should we move on to the next one well it, you know it was a bit of obvious things are obvious because scrooge doesn't like to be second best at anything tougher than the toughies smarter than the smarties and this is at least the second time in the series where he's had to back off. Because mm. he backed off at Mount Everest. Hmm. Wait a minute. Was it with the same? I think it was with Dewey as well. I think both times it was Dewey that he was interacting with. No. Um, I want to say that that was more with Huey because Huey was making the maps. Uh, the, the one we know wasn't was Louie because he was busy defending launch pads honor <laughs> such as it is mm -hmm. god this show this show so much awesome and giving the characters different ways to bond because now scrooge and dewey have something that they would like to do together so actually building family connections huh they don't waste an episode <laughs> nope but going to obvious things are obvious, as soon as we saw those golfers, I was like, ooh, statues, is there a Medusa hazard here? But that's Greek. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. But, you know, the ponies did warn about the mist. So it's like, eh, it's either a Medusa hazard or it's the mist. Because statues were obviously people. Just about to finish their game. <laughs> because they took too long. Because golf moves very slowly. So this is the ultimate pressure game kind of like playing chess with one of those clocks 
Well, that's how chess tournaments work. You make your moves as quickly as possible. Because you make your move, hit the clock. Hit the ball, get in the cart. Hit the ball, get in the cart. Remembering uh, Robin Williams' whole routine about how golf was invented and only the Scottish could think of it. And the reason it's called a stroke, because you feel like you're going to effing die every time you miss. <laughs> uh, Robin Williams. No one can see Lux's salute, but moment of silence for the fallen. So shall we move on? Yes, yes, let's move on to obvious plot is obvious. <laughs> except for Doc Corth coming back from the dead. Yeah, and he's probably evil now if he wasn't evil before. We don't know, because he could simply be one hell of a butler. Uh, yes, need to watch more of that series because I've only maybe seen two episodes and I really liked them, but I think that's all I actually had at the time, so. But it's one of those ones where I, I've heard a lot of where the manga's better, mm. so I'm curious to do a side-by-side -side comparison. You know, in our infinite spare time. Yes, that whole time machine, oh, I said that on air. Um, never mind, editing that out. <laughs> like, That's okay, you can go back and make it so you never said that. <laughs> uh, wow, I, I love that, that nice bait and switch at the very beginning of the episode. Webby, a crossbow. Sorry. Comes back with a bow and arrow. I was like, I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, okay, she's just going to switch it out for a different weapon. I'm like, yeah, regular bow makes more sense because you can fire more quickly. And I love how Donald's just like, ah! <laughs> and out. They're like, oh, why is everybody running? Though I think he took Mrs. Beakley's car. Because I don't think he had that car planned. Also, did you notice the front fountain is filled with gold coins? That Donald drove through. Yeah. So, yeah, in this episode, I only recognized Mark Beaks off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Uh... And I was just like, I didn't know that would until we got to the actual reveal in the episode i'm like lux going with bugs bunny's advice from the tiny toons pilot villains always fall for cheesy disguises you're not evil how were you fooled Wh what are you ash ketchum <laughs> i was fooled because i wasn't thinking and I only recognized Mark Beeks because of his earphones and the way he, just the way he was standing just kind of stood out to me. And I'm surprised I didn't like realize it when I was looking at the thumbnail for the episode because <laughs> they're all right there in the thumbnail. Which I didn't see. Otherwise, I probably would have known at the start of the episode. But as soon as they went surprise, I was like, oh, we got the whole cast here. Also... Nice touch on making fun of all those um, overly fancy thematic magicians like Chris Angel. I enjoyed his stuff for a while, then I kind of got over it, and I started watching this other guy who like did his stuff more seriously, but still with the air of like, uh, still public magicians, like right in front of people's faces kind of magicians, what they call the street magicians. This one guy was famous for this one trick where he would actually put his hand on the ground and rotate it all the way around 360 a couple of times. And he'd usually make sure he'd do this in front of firemen, EMTs, basically any medical professional. He would do this particular trick in front of them. And I really enjoyed that because just look on their faces going, that's not medically possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, really liked him. I really liked him for that. He was a little serious, but back to theatrical magicians, the ones I really like are the ones who don't take themselves seriously. Like Penn and Teller. They're theatrical magicians because they also show how the tricks work in the process. It's great. It's informative and fun. Yes, it was both work and play. <laughs> and that was my segue back into the episode. Now over to you, Ember. <laughs> uh, because it was very obvious to me that except i assume scrooge got himself out that was like scrooge got himself out he locked them all in so he could have the house to himself and then when huey started accusing the wrong people and they were disappearing i'm like hmm i wonder what cursed object scrooge has to make that work 
I was just thinking he was Scrooge. Therefore, he would have some sort of cursed object that would make that work. Who says it needed to be cursed? Scrooge is just that skilled. Yeah, but why take the effort to go back into the room if you could use a magical MacGuffin? Ah. Uh... You have to work smarter, not harder. I'm not sure if Duckworth is evil or not, because he, he's still doing everything that was helpful to Scrooge. But apparently he and Beakley did not get along. Yeah, that's what I got from that last spot. Something just like, hmm. Well, one, he was immediately insulting her. And two, her reply was to walk right through him and go, I preferred it when you were dead. That's another thing. This is the Disney Channel. And they're relying words like murder, death, kill. All the usual words that get edited out of the shows. The majority of shows especially children's shows yeah I, I mean they removed the word death kill and murder from naruto on the cartoon network visual edit as opposed to audio but how about taking the crosses out of shaman king a show literally about interacting with the spirits of the dead they love to take out even the stuff that's not a swastika that looks like a swastika the luck emblem uh, Majin, I believe it's called. I think that's it, yeah. But yeah. But back to this wonderful show. But apparently he's allowed to do stuff on the... Wow. Either FCC rules have been updated, or the people who monitor children's programming have calmed down a lot. But probably just for the violent stuff, because look at all the what they get away with for PG-13 movies. But television... And movies aren't governed by the same set of standards. Yeah, I'm just saying that our yeah. society seems to err more towards the violent, punch things, hit things with mallets, shoot stuff, swords, all that stuff. That's A-OK. -okay. Anything that actually has to do with the real world, not so much. And especially not anything to do with sex. Ever. Oh, look. They're blushing. Edit that out. The fact that the helmet got stuck on Dewey, that that was great. You can't get that helmet off, can you? No. <laughs> no. Oh! <laughs> Daft Punk reference! Chick! Yep. Uh, it's like, also stop smoozing with... Smoozing with the guests and just serve punch. And keep going back to, you literally gave me one hour to prepare. <laughs> like, why didn't he, like, just grab some... Contact book. Oh, wait. Scrooge Ray wouldn't have one of those laying around. He probably has a memory like a steel trap. And not the joke version, old and rusty, but sharp and never lets go. Yeah. Also, if he does have a list like that, it's probably in his wallet. Also, a nice touch that he left it behind. Well, that was probably Duckworth's planning because he took Scrooge out of there. Also, I want to know what Duckworth's parties look like because they're so good. So I want to, like, is it spin like this? What? I also love how everyone's like, ah. I like Duckworth. He was great. Uh, that's also a warning there that Duckworth could be potentially evil. If all the villains like Duckworth and all hate Mrs. Beakley. Ooh, that's a nice catch. That's a good one. I like it. Because, like, so far, everyone that's been in the intro that's chasing after... Scrooge that isn't part of his family that's been on the evil side so far has been evil or at least twisted in some way because <laughs> um screw loose seems to be a bad guy in the intro and so far he's definitely leaning that way because he's falling down that path of science before all Though something else that's kind of slowly popping into my head right now is the thought that maybe this is, since Scrooge has been separated from his family from so long, that he's learned to, like, rely on these other people so much that he's ignored stuff that he wouldn't have to just have people around him. And as it moves on where his family starts to come back into his life, and as he's getting closer to his family... These outside people that are inside his inner circle start to turn on him. And then he has to rely on his family to help defend against these people. Because they have more inside information because of how much they've interacted with Scrooge. 
because it just hit me like he ignores screw loose's stuff and just goes on with it and then there's duckworth just think about him's definitely off i think the only one we can safely go yeah he's not gonna turn evil is launchpad if he did he'd be like oh i'm sorry i wasn't supposed to do that he'd be like let's flip the script is it okay if i eat your brains <laughs> oh i was thinking more like Storkules, you know Suddenly turned evil, but yeah, I don't really want to do this, but I can't help it. Yeah, something like that. Because <laughs> it just seems like, wait a minute, all these people that apparently Scrooge McDuck trusted at one point are probably going to turn on him. And he has to rely on his family to help him out of it, which is something he couldn't rely on before because of the whole incident. This is... The, With Della. Yeah, this is, this is just getting... Wow. But we don't know for sure that... Duckworth is evil. Yeah, I'm just saying that this is kind of an interesting thought I'm going down. No, it is, because Screwloose may be in Scrooge's employ, but I never really thought that Screwloose was on Scrooge's side in this generation. He's on the side of science. Well, what he perceives as science, anyways. His methodology of science and how dare anyone not acknowledge his brilliance. And that will be all the more bittersweet because Fenton has control of the gizmo duck suit. So you have the classic trope of student having to take out mentor. Mm. Because if Screwloose does change sides, he's going to want the gizmo duck suit back. Because he won't have the funding to build another one. Unless he works for the guy I can't remember the name of. Glomgold or Mark Beeks. Mark Beeks. Because Mark Beeks could get the funding for it. But why would Mark Beeks fund it when he could just steal it? Why not just steal the inventor too? Because he's already stole one of his inventions. This series. There's awesome, there's awesome, and then there's this series. <laughs> Which is pretty freaking awesome. And I'm I'm really interested to see how things will change in the household now that Duckworth is back. Because obviously Duckworth and Beakley butt heads. If Duckworth is loyal to Scrooge, some of that loyalty should rub off onto the nephews because Scrooge values them. It's going to be really interesting. It's hard to tell how he's thinking about them right now because of his small bit of interaction when he was introduced in the room with Scrooge. Well, he refers to them politely enough when first introduced, and then he pretty much immediately rides on Huey. And the fact that he used a real axe. Just something feels off about him. And I'm not talking about the fact that he's translucent. Yeah, yeah, he's a little translucent, but what's really off there is Beakley's comment of, I liked it better when you were dead. I'm pretty sure spirit still counts as dead. Yeah, but I think she means... Gone. Oh, it was very clear what she meant, but it was an interesting choice of phrase. So apparently being a ghost has some semblance of life. And apparently we already know that she can deal with ghosts quite well. Because if you look back at the shorts, <laughs> she takes care of a ghost that is already in the manor. So we could have a whole Beakley versus Duckworth thing. You know, the showdown of the two superior servants. Mm. Also, thanks to that one promo that makes it sound okay warning spoiler alert because we saw a promo that mrs beakley was missing one servant getting rid of another yeah i think that's the episode that will air right after the the next weekend after an episode that just recently aired interesting should we wrap things up oh yeah so what were your final thoughts on these two wonderful episodes really enjoy these Love that we had some pony crossover here and that it made sense because Kelpies are something you would find in a Scotland in this series. As I, I hope if I actually go over to Scotland ever, I won't run into them. Yeah, I wouldn't want to run into any of these Scottish creatures because they, they are some of the most horrible, terrifying things like ever. So yeah, bad. At least with the Japanese Kappa, you had like a 50-50 chance because they would like drag you off, but they would also occasionally help people. And the water, 
that was kept in their skull could be used for healing. So you had a chance. <laughs> Kelpies, you were just dead. So you're saying I have a chance. <laughs> well, I just love Launchpad in that first episode. Wow. Uh, the second episode just gives you so much to think about. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's fan videos out there. Because I remember like skimming over them because I was like, I haven't watched those episodes yet. I know that's about that episode. Skim, skim. I'm sure that they go into way further down the rabbit hole than we do. And this has been our thoughts on Disney's DuckTale reboot, episodes 12 and 13. The Missing Links of Morshire and McMystery at McDuck Manor. Well, I'm pretty sure we don't have any missing links here, but of course this isn't Morshire either. So yes, we have all the usual links, give or take a few, just in case Lux perhaps forgot something or found something new. Oh, that's where I put them! The only mystery here is why you stay to the outro? Because the episode's kind of over, I'm pretty sure the drawing's done. Uh, and there's other videos you could be watching. I mean, this is YouTube. Um, I mean, they might not even be our videos. I mean, we, we are just a tiny fraction of the variety that's available on YouTube. Wait, where are you going? Oh my god, look at what I found in the related videos! Wow! <sighs> hey, thanks for checking us out. Like, subscribe if you haven't, please. I mean, if you do the subscription thing. Uh, comments, uh, we, we do read all of them, don't always reply, but we do read all of them, even the ones that end up in spam, we promise. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.